<laughs> hey, you want to say hi to everybody? Hello, Fox Van D here and Maxie. Maxie's not interested in the camera. He likes to get down as soon as I get started. So today, I will be sharing part three of my series on my six year battle with thyroid disease, actually longer than that, but six years of serious problems with it. So in part one, I shared what is thyroid disease. In part two, I talked about how I found out I had thyroid disease and the, all the complications I had along the road. Today, I will share what I found out when I finally went to the doctor and what we did and then go from there. I will warn you, I'm having a lot of trouble talking these days. Lately, it seems when I first had my stroke, I was able to put one or two words together. I've gotten much better over the last few years. However, lately it seems to get bad again. I don't know. I have still a lot of struggle. I feel like doing the YouTube and singing and do my music has helped me a lot. So I hope it'll keep getting better, hopefully. But I've been struggling with more thyroid problems lately, so that could be causing these issues. There are times when I think I just can't do YouTube anymore. But as long as I think people are finding value by watching my videos, as long as I feel like I'm still able to inspire people, through my life, what I'm doing, doing, and my music, and what have you, I'll keep doing YouTube. If you don't see me here, you'll know I just didn't have a choice. I couldn't do it anymore. But I'll try to keep you informed. So before I get started, first let me share a little intro that explains what my channel's about and a little bit about who I am. Through my song. Thank you, God, for showing me how you intended for my life to be. Thank you, God, for guiding me into a world where I can be just me. I love the mountains, the trees, and the streams. I love the desert and wildlife it brings. The freedom of my life allows me to roam. Wherever I go, it becomes my new home. So in part two, I left off where I got back to California after spending a few months in Washington with my family. I got to the doctors and she gave me three options. The first option was she could put me on medication, which she said may help, but who knows. I would have to be on that medication being tested every few weeks to a month for at least a year before they could decide if it was actually helping me. That was not really an option because I had to be at my ex-husband's house, which was not a good situation. I can manage being around him for a few weeks at a time, that's all. So I said, no, I can't do that. I have to get back to Arizona. So she said, well, we could do surgery and remove the thyroid because it was that bad. It would have killed me if I hadn't had something done. <laughs> I didn't want surgery. I had already had complications from other kinds of surgery in the past. I just didn't trust it. Plus the recovery time, who knows how long that would take. So the third option was radioactive iodine, which would kill the thyroid. It would still be in here, but not active, had no function whatsoever. So that's what we opted for. So I had the radioactive thyroid, which produced 
hypothyroid, just the opposite of what I had because I had no thyroid, have no thyroid. A reason I had a hyperthyroid is due to Graves' disease, which is an autoimmune disease, and it can cause a lot of pro problems with your thyroid, and the Graves' disease did cause me a lot of problems with my thyroid. But there are also complications with uh, the radioactive iodine or removal of the thyroid. Some of the complications can be bleeding, infection, injury to the recurrent laryngeal nerve, which is a voice box, hypothyroid, thyroid, thyrotoxic storm, which is rare now, injury to the superior laryngeal nerve, and uh, the hypothyroidism can regulate, should, was supposed to be regulating the calcium levels of my system. When the thyroid is removed, the whole system becomes acidic. Uh, so too little calcium and too much phosphorus is common with hypoparathyroidism. Calcium is the most a uh, plentiful, really, a uh, mineral in your body, but when you're not creating it naturally, can cause uh, problems with your bones and teeth, muscle contraction, and narrows and widens the blood vessels, sends nerve vestiges, releases hormones, and clots the blood. So, those are some things that can happen. The so low calcium can have symptoms of irregular heartbeat, muscle cramps or spasms, seizures, tingling in your hands and feet, which is really neuropathy, which is what I have in my feet. So once you have your thyroid killed, they give you, really don't give a choice. You have to go on synthetic thyroid because Doctors don't like to prescribe natural thyroid. And the synthetic thyroid in wrong doses can show signs of lethargy, weight gain, fatigue, and brain fog, most often related to the dosing. And often after surgery or, or radiation, patients feel worse than they did before they had the thyroid dealt with, um, can lead to oste osteoporosis, which is weakening of the bones. And this really is a challenge to balance the synthetic hormones. Your live thyroid knows exactly how your horm hormones need to produce. Basically, the natural thyroid hormone includes more things. T4, T3, T2, T1, and calcitonin. Uh, anyhow, so I think natural thyroid would be better, but the doctors won't give me a reason why they can't let me have natural thyroid. So within a week of my having the radioactive iodine, I noticed I had eye problems. They say it's from the Graves' disease but I never had any problems really until I had the radiation. So anyhow, my eyes started protruding. They were bulging eyes, really looked bad and couldn't see. I had double vision, had burning and dry eyes, which I still have all of that, burning, dry eyes, and double vision. So because of the bulging eyes, I would have to undergo surgery to fix that. So knowing that I couldn't stay there in Modesto with my ex-husband, I knew I needed to get back to Arizona. I would not have a Kaiser anymore, so I would have to use my Medicare and Medicaid, which is state insurance. So I had to get in one stable place so I could have a, a permanent address. So I moved to a place called Ajo, just about 
I don't know, less than 50 miles from the Mexican border uh, in southern Arizona. So I found this place called Coyote House. It was a campground with no electricity or power or anything. Did have wa running water on the sites. And they did have designated sites. And I could pay less than $600 for a full year to stay there. So that's what I did. So I paid for a year because I knew I would have to have eye surgery. So I had a friend in Tucson, Arizona, with a, who I went to high school with. And I recently contacted her. And I got a hold of her and I told her I was going to, I went to visit her actually, got like we'd never been apart. I don't know how I would have got through those surgeries and all the things that happened to me that year without her help. She took care of me before and after each surgery, which there were four. And she took care of me when I broke my back for a week. And she would come and visit me in the rehab for a month. So I can tell you... She was tr truly a blessing. I haven't seen her for a while. I need to get a hold of her. I miss her. During that time, that year was a very, very rough year. I lost my little dog, Dolly. Dolly was killed by a coyote right there at, at the campground coyote house. So I hadn't been a at Coyote House for a very long. I really had not made any friends. I met a lady named Betty and her a friend, Bob. And we visited a couple times, but they were camped quite a ways from me, like about a mile, a big campground. So I really didn't know anybody. And I was having a lot of problems. I was getting lightheaded, just passing out. My arm was numb then. And I finally had to go into, I can't remember where I went, somewhere up by between there and Phoenix, and went to a hospital. And they had to check, they checked me out. They couldn't figure out what was causing it. But I couldn't speak, couldn't talk at all. I couldn't even say hardly two words together. And anyhow, so they never could figure out exactly what happened, but they had to assume it's probably a, a stroke. Then when later on, when I broke my back and I was in rehab, they did all kinds of tests there. And they told me it was definitely a, a stroke that caused it. And they ch checked all kinds of things, did speech uh, testing and all kinds of stuff. Anyhow, so that was what caused my speech problems. And I still have those. I still have the numbness in my arm all the way to from my pretty much my neck down to my fingertips. I think that's more nerve damage than anything. Um, so within a few weeks after the broken back started healing, I still wasn't healed. I had to take care of things. I still had to take care of myself. I had nobody there to help me. So I was standing on a step stool. I stepped on the end, whereas we're not actually on the stool. When I did that, it flipped. And I fell off then and tried to catch my ball with my hand and I broke the wrist. Then I couldn't even open a pill bottle or anything. So that was another thing, that my broken back, broken wrist, and a stroke, and the loss of my little dolly. And then I had to have start, start having eye surgeries. So the eye surgeries were scheduled to get, fix the bulging eyes supposed to help the double vision it really didn't do anything for the double vision it didn't do anything for burning or dry eyes 
so I had to have the bones cut on both sides of, of each eye, from the front all the way to the back, to the very back end of the eye socket, and had to take a fingernail size, like my baby fingernail, out of each side, and they took out a sinus ca uh, cavity on each side or something. So I have had a lot of sinus issues, and I get scabs inside, and it doesn't want to heal properly. Then after that, they did that. They had to cut out the skin because I had the drooping eyes. I still have that a bit, mostly on this eye, I guess. I don't know which eye. Well, uh, both of them a little bit, but more on one eye than the other. Still have the drooping eyes, but they did cut out some skin and restitched, I guess. And I have no um, tear ducts, so my eyes won't water properly. And so that's what causes the dry eyes. They put some plugs in there to cause the tear ducts to work, but it never helped. It wouldn't do anything. And then I guess they came out on their own. Anyhow, so I still have those problems. When I finally got my glasses, they had to put prisms in them to help with the double vision. Um, up until then, the only way I could drive is if I got a double uh, vision thing, I would just blink. I just kept blinking every now and then. To, it'll go away, and then I'll eventually it'll come back after I blink a few more times, and then it'll go away. So now, on occasion, on very rare occasions, even with the glasses, I get double vision, but not bad. But mostly I get burning and dry eyes, and sometimes shooting pain in the eyes. So apparently some of that is the cataracts. So now, after all that, now they told me I have severe cataracts. I have to have both eyes done. That's a couple more surgeries, which I'm going to have to do this summer here in Quartzsite. Then I still recently have, have problems with the hypothyroid. So hypothyroid is giving me a lot of symptoms. I feel like I have brain, brain fog all the time. I can't eat. I, tr I eat. I force myself to eat, but I feel nauseous. Anyhow, it's cause I'm not having a lot of weight gain. In fact, people tell me I look I'm like I'm losing weight again, but that can be because I'm hypothyroid, not hyperthyroid. I don't think it's I don't think that's the case. I haven't noticed any loss of weight when I do get on the scales, but I feel like I'm in a fog all the time. I lose my balance. I get lightheaded, weak. I may be anemia is back for, again, um, so, but I am eating, and especially after this last trip I took, my friends really got on me, told me I need to eat. So that's kind of the story for now, and I'll have to keep you updated on what's happening with the thyroid. I'm supposed to go in Monday and have the labs done again. It's been six weeks since they increased my medication. So they ought to tell me if that helped. Um, so I'm I'm just feeling like I don't have the, any, any energy. I'm so drained all the time. I can barely function sometimes. 15 minutes of anything is just, I, that's it. I have to stop, sit down, whatever. So... Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with the thyroid right now, but I do know, hopefully, this cataract surgery will help my eyes. That's part of the problem because I think my focus and my balance is off because of my eyes. Then it also tires me out trying to see right, especially, you know, I just have to take care of things, you know. When you're not having anybody do things for you, got to do it so anyhow so i'm not discouraged i feel like i feel like things are getting done and i wouldn't encourage anybody that has to go through these things don't assume that everything's over 
I kept thinking maybe I was going blind, but even if I did, I have God take care of me. He always sees me through. He always has. I could not do this without my faith, people. My faith is the most important thing to me. I believe that God has watched over me. He said, I've gone through enough. And he's watching over me, make sure, making sure I can handle anything. And you can too. So thank you for watching. And hope this video has given you value and a better understanding of what, of what thyroid issues are and the different things that can happen when your thyroid is out of whack. So thank you all for coming.